Hello and welcome once again to the STS uh, Inc. support, technical support webinar. My name is Kurt Fisher again, and uh, this is our second webinar in a series of webinars that are going to help uh, you with technical support for the DTF modular system, uh, software integration, and the like. So uh, it's welcome, uh, you guys, ha uh, back here again for uh, the second time. What I wanted to go over before we get into the Flexi software program, I just want to go over a couple of things that we did last week that I thought were really important, just to make sure that they're in your mind at all times. One of those things, if you look at the printer itself and you're ready to start your print operation for that day, you want to always make sure that you're checking that media, making sure that that media has no bubbling in the back. So everything is tight. And if you see that, and frankly, a lot of the time, you may notice if the room is humid or you've got some uh, dust in the room or something like that, it's always good to unlock the uh, printer and allow the media to pull forward to tighten up any slack, get a nice clean surface to start with. You got your media clamps in position and then just relock it. Make sure those clamps are in position. Make sure, again, remember what we talked about last time. Make sure you've got that vacuum always in the on position. Remember that integration of MSM and the, uh, the RIP. Oh, make sure that those things are integrated so they're on high and they're always on standard, okay? Always on, always on when you're using that so you, you can be assured that that media is housing, uh, being pulled down on the platen itself, okay? So that's one thing that I want to go over quickly. The other thing, too, is the white ink. Now, any white ink for any application, any type of print application, any white ink has been very difficult to manage a lot of the time in any process that you see. So DTF is no different. So primarily what I like to show you too, and we went over this last time, but I just think it's important. In the morning when you're ready to start your print job, you've got your cartridge, you're gonna shake that cartridge, but another element that you can use is to unlock the cartridge bag from the high capacity adapter and then manipulate that bag. Move that bag around. Make sure that the, that pigment is mixed in with the rest of the product so that when you're ready to go and you know that you've done this for about a minute and 30 seconds or two minutes, you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about ink dropping nozzles or any of this, this uh, type of uh, things that have happened to people when they don't shake the ink bag. So manipulate your ink bag. It's very important that you shake and you lock back in Make sure that that's locked back into position when you're using it. Uh, this is something that's so important in our business and that you've got to make sure that you're doing it all the time. Now, STS is working on this. Uh, we've got a new product that we're going to be releasing probably by the end of August. You can pre-order this product on the STS website by the end of this month. It's a recirculation system. And let me show you a little bit about what our, uh, we're doing here to try to get away from having to agitate the bag all the time. So let's, let's take a look. If I go over here, you can see this unit here that we've got set up. Here's the two recirculation units connected to two bags of white ink in slots five and six. I've also got filtration in here too. So we're trying to conquer more than one problem with this new unit. This recirculation system could be a deal breaker for us. It's a huge system that's really going to make it a lot easier for us to manage our white inks, agitate them when we want to. I have a control panel down at the bottom here. I can put it any time I want. I can agitate the inks, recirculate the inks hour per hour or however you want to set it. We're going to have a lot more information on this as we go along, but yes, you can, you'll can. you be able to pre-order this product from STS Inks uh, very shortly, probably by the end of this month, maybe the first week of August, and then delivery timetable will be probably the first, or, or excuse me, the last week of August, maybe the first week of September. So keep in mind, this could be a, a major factor uh, in helping you manage your white ink loads and white inks uh, for your DTF uh, modular system. So that's, that's something that we're really going to be happy about. Also, too, I wanted to go over one extra element here too. If you look at what we're going to talk about today, we're going to understand the Flexi DTF Pro Edition software, uh, the workflow and editor editions. We're going to have a nice overview from Shahar Turjiman, our CTO and expert in this uh, uh, field, understanding and using presets. 
Uh, we're going to figure out ways of saving time in the pre-print process. We're also going to do job properties and layout tab use. You know, that's probably one of the things you do in the beginning of this process. And then also workflow nesting. A lot of folks have questions on those. But I'm going to, uh, at this point, I'm going to turn the, the mic over to Shahar, Shahar Turjiman, and he's going to go through uh, the workflow process with the DTF Flexi Pro Edition software. Good morning, everybody, um, and good afternoon to my our team in Europe as well. Our team, I see some customer from Japan. All right, I hope I see that is a little bit late over there, but uh, thank you for joining us. So first of all, we're going to discuss about how uh, how I upgrade my my Reap software. You know, because we always uh, uh, we always uh, update the, the software and uh, the software available in the cloud all the time. So every time we uh, we do any new build or new uh, software is going to be online. So when you open your Flexi, you always can go to help and about, and then you can see the build number. You can see over here the build number is 3760. Okay, I close the, the file and I'm going to log into my uh, account to your Flexi. Let me close the uh, my MSM and I'm going to. Let me just open another tab for SI Cloud. Give me one second. Is in different. Okay, so sharing the news. <laughs> All right, so I go to saicloud.com. We're going to log in, uh, log in to my S to the SAI Cloud. Click login, and you can see all the version of the Flexi you uh, you have. So. Basically over here, Flexi DTF Pro, I can click inside and you can see right now is a new version that is 3777. So I'm going to, up, to update my, uh, my software. I click download now and it's going to be download uh, the new version at this moment. So a couple minutes is going to download. I think I downloaded before, let me check. Um, Yeah, we're going to uh, wait uh, for another one minute to uh, download. So basically, uh, the way I do it, I'm closing my uh, my Flexi. So none of the software need to be open. And then I'm going to move it to show my screen. So as you can see right now, if I right click, on the Flexi and I go to open file location, I can see exactly where is our RIP being installed. Uh, hold on, I can see right over here. Sorry, I have two screens, so I have to move the screen. So you can see uh, if I, again, I uh, right click, open file location, and you can see where is the location is being installed at this moment, okay? So we we'll wait for the download. I go to the download right over here. So double click on the on the file. It will ask you if you uh, want the remote crack. You say yes. So I keep need to move uh, the screen. So the language you can select any language uh, you wish. So English. Okay. License agreement, I accept all agreement, next. So you can see over here, you will show uh, if you want to install it in 
in the same folder or new folder. So it's up to you if you want to keep the other one or to keep it uh, the same. It doesn't matter at this, at this, at this point, it's up to, uh, to you guys to decide where you want to install. Or to example, if you don't have a space in C drive, so you can go ahead and install it in, G, in D drive. Make sure you don't install the, the, the program, the SAI in, in a USB disk or some external hard drive because it's not working well. Uh, one is external, okay? So we're going to put it at the 22-1, uh, okay? Just in, uh, uh, just for the sample. Next, uh, keep the sample print. You know, it's a file that's coming, a lot of different files, sample print file, you can use it. And then next, uh, the folder, you can keep the same folder or you can, the name of the rip, or you can keep it dash one or, or the date of the version. Okay, install, install. It will take about uh, five minutes uh, um, uh, to install uh, the complete, uh, the RIP uh, soft software. And, but in the meantime, we're going to talk a little bit about the MSM because time is uh, important for everybody and I'm going to open MSM. So as you can see over here, we can install in the MSM in one, in one uh, computer, we can control up to uh, two printer at the same time. Um, at the same time, uh, so you can uh, control two computer and run two computer in one license. Okay. Uh, when I go, I have some question that I saw in in um, in the social network. So uh, how I can update my uh, my media land? So again, we go to remote control. On the remote control, go to advanced setting. On the advanced setting, you, uh, you, you make on the land right over here. Change over here to, uh, we, our media is 320 feet, to, uh, 328 feet. That's equal to 100 meter. So we're going to change it to 95 meters. So we, we want to know ahead of the time before the media uh, run out and is not going to basically you have a head strike or some issue with it. Uh, as well, uh, print stop has to be on, on. I saw some customer that's basically, they, they put their, the right length, but the printer is, the print stop is off. So basically when the media is finished, it's keep printing. So we need to stop the printer as, uh, as the media length is, is off. Is, uh, it's finished basically. And then you do update, and then we update the parameters in in the main board. Okay, so in the main board, basically to the printer, we send a signal every time you do update. You send a signal from the, your computer to the printer. All right. So we finish uh, uh, the installation. I'm going to exit my MSM, and you can see over here when we finish, it will show us uh, the activation code. I can go ahead and uh, open my uh, my browser. Uh, I can take my activation code uh, right from here. Control C, copy the file and uh, the activation code. Control V. Next. Next. Uh, hold on. Okay, the license used to the other software. So we have a couple licenses over here. So we go back and we're going to use that license. So we, this is the license for this computer. Here we go, license uh, successful, finish. And basically we finished to install our uh, new uh, uh, update. Is another question over here is another screen will pop up that will say uh, the product. So on the product, don't use the small printer on Flexi 22. Use the Pro version, okay? This is the, the interface. As well, if you want to copy all your data from, from your older uh, RIP software, you can click it, you can check it or uncheck it. It's up to you if you want to start fresh or you want to get all the information, okay? But if you think that you want to get everything fresh and you don't need to do any file, 
just uncheck it. If you need to, if you need to copy all your information or, or on any information you have, you go to copy file and then click OK. And then it will ask, where is the old version right over here? And which one you want to copy? You want to copy the ICC profile or you want to the template if you have and so on, or color a swatch a, a library and so on. So you can do that and just click copy. It basically copy all the information and and we finish the installation. Okay, so if I right click over here and I open the file right now, okay, I'm going to move the screen. You can see over here right now, I copy all the information, but I didn't copy the driver. Okay, I didn't copy uh, what kind of printer we have or which model of printer. So we, every install is, is a preset. Okay, so to load the preset, in the print in the, to the environment, the preset to the Flexi, I basically right click on the on the photo uh, to the Flexi and go to open file location, and then I'm going to check the preset at the preference manager. Sorry, preference manager. Double click, and you're going to open a file a folder right over here. This is a factory default if you want to start a default but you want to load the preset for sts inks with a 6 to 8d uh, printer so i'm going to go to import uh, import the file and you can find a folder that's called um, sts pre uh, preference and this is the preference okay when i double click on the preference again is you're going to see it on on the c drive uh, on the c on program file and DTF uh, edition 22 or dash 122. You can see over here I have the dash one. This is the new one when you install. And when you go to, S, uh, to STS preference, double click. Um, and it's going to be V5 probably in, in a two weeks. It's going to be V5 as well. So double click. Are you sure you want to load the preset? I say yes. Is load and exit. And again, that also is a good solution as well. If something uh, you change something in the Reap software, or you have any issue with the Reap, or is uh, or is a color no matching or something, you always can go to Preference Manager, okay, back again, and just load the the new preset, okay. So I go, I exit the file, and then we open the the Flexi. One second is loading, and you can see when I load the Flexi, everything basically show, uh, include the, my last day uh, print. Okay, so I'm going to delete it. Yes. Okay. So I can move the screen as you wish. If you have any uh, folder to hold, you want smaller or larger to see the preview, you can go up and down. Okay. You can move left and right as well over here. Okay, you can customize your screen as you wish. And we have the reaping and we have the output is basically the queue of printing at this moment. As you can see, that is uh, also important is to change the IP address for the printer because the default, when we load the preset as a default, it will be 10.01.251. This is the printer in our showroom at STS, that is the preset will set up. However, if I want to change the IP address or you change the network, okay, you can double click and you can change, you can double click on the STS inks D, 628D, double click and then you can see the IP address. If you don't know your IP address, okay, you always can go ahead and open MSM and you can see this is my IP address right over here. If it's printer number one or printer number two, I always can see the IP address. So this is the correct IP address. But if you need to change, you always can change as well. You can do test. Do not use, do not change any port number. The port number always need this. The protocol has to be 91, uh, 9100. Okay. If you go, if you go test, you can see check connection uh, uh, success. That's mean it's good. So we're good to go. 
Okay, so we have uh, basically uh, three different modes. We have uh, good, better, and best, okay? The best basically will give you the best quality, but slow, but this amazing quality. So far, we see a lot of customers very happy with the 720 by 720. And again, if you, if you, have, if you, want, if you need the speed, last white is basically used 360 by 1080, okay? Um, all right, so we're going to start to uh, uh, work. Uh, we're going to open a file. We go to the best 720 by 720, and we will start to take a file and walk around the file. So the first file I'm, I'm, I'm going to take is uh, basically a file that is uh, with the a PDF file that has a lot of Pentan color, and you want to match the Pentan color. So I take the SAI print sample, open the file, it's loading, double click to open the file. This is my screen. Okay. So before I print, you know, I always want to pull uh, the media size. Okay. So to pull, you, you can. You can do two two way to pull the media size. One is automatically with the printer. Basically, you just click over here, pull size. Basically, you send signal to the printer, pull the size, and put the right size because you don't want to print on the on the on the gutter. The gutter is basically on the two clamp on the right and left. Okay, so the printer will send the signal. It will get the size, and you can see the size is correct, and we're good to go. Okay, then. We have if I want if I want to get a margin so from the right or from the left. But remember, it's very important to not print. Is no ink on the guard on the right and the left side. Okay, it's very important. Okay, because the ink, uh, the distance between the media clamp to the head is 1.2 to 1.3 millimeter. So it's a very tiny gap, and you do, you don't want to drop and uh, drop ink there, and then that's one millimeter will be touching the head and then you're going to have drop noses, okay? So if you need to change it or move it, go ahead, you can move a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. If you want to start uh, to have some, uh, if some of you guys don't use the shaker and you want to have some uh, slack, a little bit space to shake the uh, manual, uh, the film, you can move in, uh, in the top or the bottom so you can have you can have some space to hold uh, the film and shake it manually. So this is the way you know if you put one inch of each size, okay, it will be easier for you to hold the film and sh and sh and apply the powder manually. Okay, so size is uh, is this is the size you can put any size you wish, 100% or fit to media. Um, Okay, everybody know about this one. Uh, it's an option over here after output. Basically, after after print, what I'm going to do with the file? I'm going to hold it, put it in hold, okay, or I archive it or delete it. So basically, when the printer, if you have so many print on the bottom of on hold and you want after print delete, you can just click over here, delete. Okay, and basically every time the job will start to print is basically after printing is going to delete the file, not from the computer, from the RIP software, okay? So again, anything you want to change or you change any preset or you do any changing, you always go to save as and create your own preset and how you like to preset it. So to example, if I change delete, and I go select all, okay. I can call it call it 720 uh, by 720 delete file. Or new preset, to example. Okay, or whatever you wish to, to call it. Okay. The next one we are going to talk about a lot, that's start to become interesting because a lot of customers getting a file from uh, from different customer, it can be PDF, can be ESP, can be uh, the PNG, TIFF, and you don't know how the the uh, the the 
the file been created if it's uh, uh, Adobe 1998, SRGB, and so on. So basically, I can go right over here to advance, right over here to advance. On advance, I can, I can see this file has everything. This file has CMYK, RGB, and the grayscale, okay? Um, I always can go over here to, uh, uh, to the second tab and change, uh, and we can see what is the file basically, if it's a bitmap, if it's a vector, if it's a text, or, or, and what's gradient, okay? So I always can change, check what file is it, okay? And how I like to print it, to example, if I, uh, if I use, uh, to example, the vector is relative uh, chromatics, okay? And, I, and you can see over here, this is saturation, okay? Saturation will give you more ink, but if you want to have more uh, gamut, you always can choose per sexual right over here, okay? So you can change over here and see how, the, uh, how it print for you the color matching, okay? Or you can go to pure hue, and then if you want to pure cyan and so on, you can change it as well. Or tolerance, you can change also the tolerance. So this is about all about the advanced color management, okay? We're going uh, on, on this file, on this exactly uh, print, uh, in, in, sorry, in this uh, uh, screen, we also have a chalk. So if you click on the chalk, okay, we have two different uh, chalk, okay? We can chalk in, we can bleed or none, okay? Because some of, some of the customer, maybe they already chalk uh, the white or they ha already have a spot white. So you don't need to chalk it again, okay? We also uh, adding on, on, on the 22 version is a chalk only rip gradient under a white data. That's mean if you have, a, if you, if you have a pictures, okay, or color, is only going to uh, uh, to do uh, basically choking under the color. But if you have a texting, white texting, it will not choke the uh, the white texting. So you click OK, and again you can save the preset and call it choke. If you want more choking, you can call it choke. To example, this is this one is choke zero one. You can call it Choke zero two and so on. Uh, color mapping. So the color mapping is. Uh, I, I will show a little bit about it. How to do color mapping and uh, color calibration. Basically, uh, I'm going to call to the file the same file. Okay, uh, I'm going to my desktop and I'm going to uh, test file webinar and I will take this file. You can see this is all the Penton color being set up in. In, in the file itself, okay? If I go to example to uh, Penton Color 158, okay? Double click, code it, okay? C is for coded. And you can see this is the composition of the CMYK, and the, of course, there's no white on the composition for the CMYK, okay? Um, and if I want to change it, I can go ahead and do a print uh, a swatch, basically, what the printer will do, it will print many different swatch that's close to that number, okay? So if I do a print swatch, okay, this is just a font, I click okay, okay, and I close it. And I'm going to cancel that. And you can see this is the swatch, basically is going to print, uh, is going to print all the spot color what is close. Uh, and if I zoom in so everybody can see it, you can see a number, okay, two by two or two by five and so on. So you can pick the correct uh, color matching, okay, after, of course, after printing. And make sure if you print in white, under white, so make sure you print the, the color with the white because the white will give a lot of different opacity or different color. So make sure the spot white is on, let's see. And you can see right now it's not printing the white. And I go right over here to the transparency. Go all the way here and use solid under. Okay, and then I can go back. And you can see now it will print white under. And then I can send it to print. And then I can do my color 
my color uh, testing. Okay. So I will open the file again, and I go to the third to the third uh, tabs, advanced. Uh, sorry, color color mapping, and we are at uh, 158. Double click. And let's let's assume I, I like uh, number two by four, okay? And then I do update color, and as soon as I do update color, is basically will change the composition of the CMYK. And then you can click OK, and basically every time the Pentone color will arrive at the same name, it has to be the same name as a Pentone uh, uh, 158. It will change, always will print the correct uh, uh, the correct color. Is another option to do it if you, if you, you still do, didn't get the right color, you can do a measure color. So basically, if you, if you click measure color, it depends on the device you have. I saw some devices, like very nice device, like it's a $99 in Amazon, some uh, a small device measurement for uh, color is connected by USB. And you can read basically the, the LAB value. Of course, you put the, uh, you install the driver and you put USB and you put, you, you basically do measure and you will measure the LAB value and all that information will come right over here, convert LED to, uh, to CMYK. Okay, that is a quick uh, interview in, on uh, color mapping and how you can save your color mapping. We'll go to, uh, to the next uh, tab. Okay, so we always print, uh, it's two ways to, uh, you can print, okay? Uh, the printing industry printing bidirectional or unidirectional. When you print bidirectional, the carriage move from right to left and printing, and left to right as well printing. So it's jetting both way, from right to left and left to right. If I change it to unidirectional, okay, it will, go, it will give more sharp edges, okay? But it will go only one directional. That means the machine will slow down half of the speed, okay? So we always print unidirectional and the quality of uh, our STS uh, 60 ad is fantastic. Passes, okay? The passes is uh, basically based on quality. If you want to get a better quality, or to example, you're missing uh, some uh, one or two nozzles of some color and you need uh, to rush uh, some uh, uh, order, okay? You always can go to passes. It will go a little bit slower, okay? But you can do a, a, a quality times two. So it will give more ink, less passes, and so on. So we go to a normal quality. We also have a waving effect. The waving effect is basically anti-bending. If you see bending in your print, or, or you see uh, some issue with some color, especially on, uh, uh, sometimes you see an uh, issue based on the environment, you can see uh, it look like starvation from, uh, with the purple or, or gray. You always can go to super fine, uh, uh, a super fine and wave that will give you a, um, last passes, short passes, and you can use uh, fine and, and, and fuzz a three. That also is, is a good one, as well the fine and fog one. Basically, is that the pattern, the way between pass to pass when the, uh, when the print head jetting. The vacuum fan always need to be in high, okay? You don't want to do off, you don't want to do anything. Always high, and again, when you're printing, the vacuum on the on the pattern, basically the va the fan will be in high position and pull the media down. You don't want to the media will be up uh, to avoid uh, any head strike. Okay. Uh, if you have a good environment and uh, you know you control your environment, you always can speed up a little bit more the over carriage speed. You can go higher or lower speed. But right now, if he's unchecked, is the normal. And the normal is about 320 uh, CP. That is the speed of the uh, of the carriage speed. You can uh, 
you can uh, start feed if you want to feed a couple millimeter when you are uh, running uh, the job. You can do start feed or ink dry. So basically, if if you have a couple or, or when you send a job, for example, if you send a job and and you want to have a delay between print to print, you always can go delay over here. Okay, ink drying time. You know we don't need it because it's for DTF. But if you want to have a time to to check the print or between print to print to have the time to cut, you can do that as well right over here. Okay. A enable heater option. The the heater is it's very important. Uh, if you see a, a dripping of the white, if you see the ink is not dry properly, you always to increase it. The option of the increasing of the pattern is all the way to 45 Celsius, but do not never use 45 uses. The maximum you can go is about 39 to 38, okay? Because what's happened, if you put a lot of heat on the pattern from the bottom to the to the carriage board, you to the print head, you're going to start to see a, a dropping nozzles because basically the, the heat of the bottom heated up the, the nozzles that not jetting, and basically it will dry the nozzles. So, no more than 38, but we recommend to have it at 35. Okay, uh, we have an option, uh, the test print uh, and the head clean. So if you don't want to open your MSM and you go to remote panel and do all that uh, trick around cleaning and so on, you can you can go ahead and do it. Open a file, and you can do uh, right over here nozzle test P print and basically the printer, the Flexi will will uh, send nozzle test B to the printer. As well, uh, if you want to do a cleaning uh, doing, uh, uh, doing the print, you can go always to uh, right over here to cleaning. If you want little charge, little charge and so on. So just to understand um, on, the, on, the cleaning, uh, on the cleaning method right now on the short, okay? I have, uh, uh, I will open my file and I will uh, inform to everybody how much ink is consumed uh, per cleaning. Um, we, measure, we measure it, so one second. Okay, so basically a short, a short clean will uh, consume three, milli, three milliliter the normal clean will consume five milliliter. The long clean will consume seven milliliter, and the little charge will consume 18 milliliter. The initial charge will consume 328 milliliter. Okay, so this is the count where we see on the little charge short and so on. So basically, when we uh, do a short, is a three milliliter is overall for all color okay so for a channel will consume three milliliter okay so print count print count is how many times i want to print the cmyk and the white so this is a, a function that's a, it's everything together so if you're missing nozzles or you have some issue uh, uh, dropping or you want more saturation you always can go one or two times you know so I don't recommend to go to read times because I think it's overkill on the DTF market. Okay. Uh, scan width is basically how I want to print. I want to print a print area. So basically, if you have a, a, a job that is only a nine inch, basically the scan will go only on the print area. Okay, only up to I think the minimum is about 12 in, 12 inches. So you will print 12 inches and come back. But if you go with the with a machine or media width, it basically will go all the way to the left and right. So you know, print area it's it's a nice. You also save time and it's faster. Okay, variable dot is basically is the machine has a three different dot size. We have small, medium, and large. Usually in the DTF market, we don't use small. We uh, we use medium or large because we want to get the ink to the media and we transfer the the, the ink. 
So basically, the way we do it, we uh, we use uh, all middle or large. So if you want to get a large volume on ink, you can go ahead and use a large. But if you want to go to a medium, the medium is the is the default. Okay, all other don't don't even touch because the small will give you very uh, it will give you no opacity basically. Uh, if you want to cut the media every other print, you can choose how you like to cut it two times cut so basically uh, two step three step and the pressure high pressure but the dtf always use the high pressure okay with the low pressure you you're going to have some issue with it and you may get head strike with it so do not use the low only high i highly recommend to use a single cut a three step that is the best way to go okay if i want to print every every other job we go off Okay, another option, it's a, and you can, you don't see that on my screen, hold on one second, is another option right over here is a white and white option. Let me save it a second. Let me try to. Okay, all right. So open the file again, double click, and I have white and white option. So the white and white option right now is set up as a, a, the white set up as a, as a spot color. Spot color. We are not going to touch it unless you want to have everything under color. Always, any file you bring in, you can change it in under uh, under uh, under color under color. But we always use the spot color and spot color for the white, and then in transparency we can change as we wish. Print count, okay? If you want to change print count or you want more opacity on the white, okay? You always can go, and again, the white and white option only control the white. For the, so the CMYK will print the one pass, okay? Basically one time, but the white, it can be print two times or three times or four times, however, whatever you wish to, to print, okay? And you need to do it for both channels because we use two channels, so you can use it for the two channel. And the speed also for the white. So we always use the normal, okay? Uh, overlay, basically we print uh, the white on top of the color. Do not change it. Uh, do not change the, the method on this one because this is the DTF, uh, the way the method of DTF. You know, we don't printing on UV or some different application. All right. So um, the next one we go to uh, uh, titling, okay? So the titling basically, if you if your customer send you a job, and let's assume the customer want only one part of the image, you always can go over here on the corner. You can choose, to example, only this image. Okay, and I can go back to here and you can see I only select that image to print, how many print, the size. Okay, so this is the tiling. Uh, if you want to reset, you always can go over here, reset. Uh, you can uh, click shift control and you can click on the image, you know, which uh, you like to select to print. If it's one part, two parts, in the shift and control, you can control it, okay? So I'm going to reset that. Uh, we have a, we add another uh, 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 option on, let me go over here, we're going to use just one. So we add a, a option on the, on the labeling. So if you print the label, automatic label, a lot of our customer say, hey, when you print the label or to example, the job order, okay, uh, so we can say to example, order uh, one, two, three, or you can say, or to example, if your file has already ordered one, two, three, five, you can, you can print the file or the job name or the, uh, the file, okay, the resolution, preset, over layer, uh, job name, size, a number of copy of and so on so you can change the distance between the label 
and to the graphics. Because before it was very uh, tiny gap and some customer have been ruling the print because they tried to, co to cut the label. So over here you can uh, adjust the, the size of the label and the distance, if it's small or less. Okay, so you can go all the way and you can see I'm lifting up uh, between the labels. Okay, and you can do it on the right side, on the left side, on the bottom, all around, or just any of you wish, you know, to print the label. And you can choose also the color, which color you want to print, or if you don't want to print the white on top of the, of uh, behind the, uh, basically the label, you can do a uh, knockout white. So you only print the black, you don't need to print uh, white under the labeling. Okay, we're going to disable it. And we have the, the other tab uh, that is a color adjustment. So let's assume you get a file and the file was, uh, you didn't like the red, you didn't like the blue, or the, the magenta is too pinkish, okay? I always can go over here. Quick fix is to go right over here to, uh, uh, to the icon right over here, you can uh, change. Hold on one second. We'll come up. Okay, so where is it? is <laughs> sorry guys he's moved to the other screen again okay so i always can give more green more yellow adjustment density amount so you can always go click on more magenta and so on or more blue you can you can choose however you wish to uh, to do it or let's assume you want to get a little bit more magenta but you don't want to change all all everything magenta or you can change the contrast or vividness uh, you you can do preview right over here, and you can go to, hold on, it's jumping again to my other screen. Let me close it. I know you guys has a lot of questions, so I will go over it, you know, in, uh, in the end. Okay, so let's assume I want to get only the magenta and I want to boost a little bit the magenta, okay? I want to boost a little bit or a lot. So I always can go to the 50% right over here to the dot. Click over here and I can boost only the magenta. You can lift it up the magenta. Hold on. You see? Right there. And what's happening right now, my curve of the magenta, the output from 50%, it will increase to the 80%. But you can see over here what's happening. Everything <laughs> going to be real magenta. But again, if you get a solid color magenta, or your, uh, sorry, solid color red, and you don't get the red because your file was not created as a red, or the designer created, the, choose the red that is not really reddish, or his screen is different than your screen, you always can go over here and boost how, however color you wish. You, so if you want to get better red, you know, you, you don't just boost the magenta, you also need to boost the yellow. So you go to the yellow and do the same thing with the yellow. Okay, but again, is percentage. So it depends how reddish you want to get. So you can boost also the yellow, give it up, and basically you boost all the yellow and uh, the yellow and the magenta. Okay, so I'm going to, if something happened and you don't know how, you know, you mess it up, up and down, all the, no worry. Go to reset all, it will go to the normal. Okay, it would go to normal and nothing happened. All right. Second, go to the other screen. So I'm going to the normal after the reset. And we have the uh, color separation. The color separation, basically you can see all the, the printout, you know, for all the uh, Pentone color we have in this file, specific file. This is a great file to test if your color is right or is, or is basically your, uh, your file for your, from, from your designer was not right or your cold draw is not, 
the cover draw or the or the Photoshop is not in the correct setting. So if you print this file, it should be color bearish, and you can see the grayscale, you can see the red, you can see the gray, you can see the gradient for each true uh, CMYK. And remember, when you print the CMYK, uh, is cyan, magenta, yellow, is not blue, red, and yellow. So you will see like a little bit pinkish. That is okay. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, always, when you print a file, go to preview output channel and click on spot white to see how the spot printing. And you can see right now, it, this is a PDF file, a file and it's not printing the spot white because it's no, it's no spot white under, okay? So I will show a couple ways to fix it. So we go to the transparency uh, tabs. I always can go on the bottom. I scroll down, you scroll down in the bottom, you can see white option, okay? The white option, I can choose solid under, and then I go back to it, to the color separation, and you can see right now it's correct. It's print the white way it's supposed to print. Okay, so that's that's in in the PDF file. On the PDF file, most of them is solid on there, and it will pick up every pixel will print under the color. Okay, basically it will print white under color. You can change the white opacity, uh, the white uh, density right over here. Okay, so if you print on light garment, it's not necessary to print 100% white. You can print even 50%. As long as the TPU stick to the white or to, or to your color, you're good to go, okay? Uh, and when you peel, you can see uh, uh, that it's peel nice. And when you see the gradient, usually with a half tone, you can see some issue transferring. But this is why we recommend to go with 50%. Don't go all the way to zero, okay? Okay, so... Basically, this is a PDF file, okay? You can see I printing correctly, and as well, if I take the, the file, the same file, okay, and I can use a couple ways to, uh, to use the, uh, the white, okay, the output channel, okay? I'm going to uh, close it. I'm going to take another PDF file. Uh, okay, you know, we can stay with it a second. So we can go over here. Okay, we're going to open another file uh, because I want to show like a solid color, but we can we can go over here quickly. Uh, Variable under. Variable under is basically, it will show, it will print the gradient. If you have a file with gradient, or to example, if you have a dark color, the dark uh, density will print uh, less white. And when, when is a, when is a light, uh, light color, it will print uh, more white. So basically, if I go to, uh, to preview channel, you go to preview and spot white, you can see how, how it's printed. So basically you will see gray and dark. If you see a dark, that means that is 100% like black, black, solid black. This is 100% white opacity. And we see the shade over here when it's grayish and uh, one to, uh, zero to 50. So basically you will print more and more and more and more white. Okay, based on a gradient. Okay, this is a this is under a variable under, but if you select reverse, uh, hold on. There we go. If you select invert variable under, it will do the opposite way. So you can go back to the spot white, and you can see is invert. So where is the dark color, it will not print the white, but where is the dark color, when is the light color, it will print more white. So this is good for, for example, for white shirts, okay? That is a, a good solution for it, for the white shirt, or light garment, basically. 
so we will take another file probably we uh, tie with this file so we'll take a couple file one of the file we going to uh, select on I, I select a couple of them uh, not that. here we go so first we're going to uh, take a file and under colo start we have some customer ask us hey how i can put the star under colo okay so write the star you can see over here inside so i open the file i can move it as you wish you can go right over here keep it straight and i go to to transparency when i go to transparency you can see the file I can go to the color separation and then I want to go to preview channel. I can see the white. Okay, so right now it will print a solid, a, a solid under any color. But if I go to right over here to as long as, sorry, as long as I see use alpha channel for white for white that will create the white under okay if i uncheck the file the uh, use the alpha channel see it's not printing is not basically read any any of the file so make sure when you do a preset you have to use use alpha channel the data for white okay so this is one option. Another option to use the solid. And again, this is a PNG file. And how I can see the difference between PNG or, or ESP or AI, you always can go right over here. And on the bottom, you can see uh, the file. OK, you can see the file if it's a bitmap, if it's a, 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 a PNG, and so on. OK, so you have all the information right over here. OK. Double click, open the file go back to transparency and if i go to solid under sorry review channel outputs spot white come on did i uncheck this solid alpha yeah right there Hold on. Transparency. Go to transparency. Okay. That is correct. Uh, if we if we want to do a, a, a variable under, okay some file will work and some file will not work based on your file you can see right over here okay it will not read it okay because it's a png file is a, it was not transparency but you can make it as transparency the way to make it transparency you don't need to go to photoshop or to cold raw and remove the background and so on you always can create transparency as a background right over here shift click on the background and basically you will remove all around Okay, and you can do similar to color, select all similar color and tolerance as well. You can remove all the tolerance. And if you want to keep, keep get it the edges, it depends your file. So if your file is very low resolution, you have to clean around. So to clean around, you click, hold the shift and click around, okay, to take all the background around it. Okay, so this is the file. And if you look at the spot uh, white preview, you can see right now is correct. Include the eye is black. But if you want to get the star, okay, the star to be white, okay, you basically need to put the white channel back right over here inside. So you can click control, click, okay, you control. You can add the star. So I will add a couple star over here, three star, and it should be over here the star. Hold on. Let me see where we at. Use my transparency, solid under. 
Okay, that is correct. And you can see over here, use transparency. And when you use the use transparency, you can see the star right over here is missing those three that we're using right over here. One, two, three, four, right over here. So that's mean the star will be white. Okay, and when when is a white, that means is no printing at all. And if it's black, that's printing printing white. And if it's you see a grayish, so that means the opacity. So you can see right now, over here is very dark black. Okay, if I go back to transparency and I move from 94% to 40%, you can see how we start to change the color to grayish. See, that's mean is you're getting less opacity on the white. Okay, so this is how I deal with the PNG file. We're going to delete the file right now and we'll take another file. Uh, we'll take a file that's with the gradient, to example, is uh, still is uh, uh, we open the file and we'll see on is loading. So we have a file right over here and you can see over here is a gradient right over here and we want to print the gradient. You can print the gradient or you can print solid under, okay? And you can see the file is a PDF file. Uh, you can see exactly how, what type is it. So double click on the file. Okay, uh, let's preview the file first. Let me make it straight so it'll be easy to everybody to, to see that. Okay, so I can go right over here, preview, spot white. You can see it's no spot because the file is a PDF. Is not under color. We always can go over here. We can create a transparency file in one click. Remember, you create transparency, shift click, shift click. And you can see if I go back, it will be solid under. Okay. But we can create a different way. So we can go create transparency, no transparency and we go back to a uh, variable under, click, and you can see this is the gradient we receive right now. So as you see over here, you will the white will be very, um, uh, uh, very light over your other side, and inside you will be very dark. Or you can do invert. So if you go to invert variable under, you will see it's the opposite. So where is the dark area, I will put less white. And when is the the shade white point, you know, it will be less, you know, more white, okay? So that's uh, with the gradient. We're going to take another file that is only white. So if you're printing white, that is a solid white, you don't need to print any other color. The printer can be uh, print faster. You go to white mode, okay? You go to white mode, we take the file right over here. This is only white. Double click on the file, you can see is barely we can see anything because it's white. You always can go to preview and you can go to transparency preview, okay? But I have no transparency at this moment. So we can go back to preview and spot white. And you can see this is the file that is only white and we can send the file to print only on white density mode, okay, in high density mode. You can do uh, as well, You, uh, if you want to get on the white, if, if you don't like the white or you want double pass only on the white, again, you can go to the printers, uh, you can go to white and white uh, option, you can double time the white only. And then you click OK and then you send. In case you want to do transparency or your customer send you some file with transparency, you always can go and create the file transparency by clicking create transparency, shift click, and basically we'll take all the rest, okay? All right, we take another file that is a, a, a PNG. A, before, we're dealing before with the PDF file. Now we're going to take a PNG file. We drag the file, double click, same thing. We go click preview, 
spot wide and this is the file on the preview uh, in case uh, you want to get the density or you print 1440 or 714 you always can go back over here and change the density okay make sure when you print white solid white uh, make sure the heater is uh, not 39 you know no more than 35 when you print white density because you want to get some weight and transfer the uh, the data okay we will take another file that says uh, this file is png and we're going to work on this file so again flip it so let's see how the alpha channel will print on this spot white so that one is print correctly you can see is automatically fill the gap uh, inside so you can see right over here inside is print uh, the white but in case you want to uh, in case some file not printing or you have some issue or you want to remove to example all the white around because the, sh the shirt is already white and you want to get all the white from the shirt or to example you want to get uh, the pinkish you know for for the red or to have same tone as a uh, as the t-shirt you always can go to create transparency shift click it will take all the white and you can do similar to all color area and go with a tolerance and basically it will start to remove all the white and again shift click and basically uh, when you transfer it, 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 it will look much nicer than look at the screen. And again, you can keep doing with tolerance. Okay, there's more and more and more. Okay, we will take another file that's uh, uh, to remove black. So, to example, if you have a customer that's want to print, uh, he has a black shirt and you don't need to print the black. Yeah, it will save you... Uh, it will save you a cost of a in cost so basically create transparency shift click again and basically we remove all the black around and you can see over here inside you still have black if you want to remove the black you're going to similar select area and basically all the black been removed and you can send it to print again when you go over here to preview channel okay you can see where he's going to print the white under and you can play on the white option you have a lot of different option you know maybe spot color use driver setting spot color is when you receive a, a file from some uh, a designer that you know where you want the spot and basically the spot color will be right over uh, as a alpha channel will be the spot and the spot will will pick up by the printer okay so it's spot and spot but always you can go to spot colo go back to uh, yeah, output and you can see this this file was not uh, with a white uh, with the spot white so we're going to use the transparency because I, I create the file already transparency and and the transparency it's a very good option for uh, for the DTF market you know you don't need to go to Photoshop edit or the coral draw on other file okay we will take another file that is uh... okay let's see what file is it so basically this file is is a bitmap file so and is a PNG but it was not transfer is not transparency so I can go over here click Preview, spot white, and you can see it's not filling the gap inside because some maybe your customer want to print inside the D white, okay? Because if it's white shirt, okay. So the way I do it, I go to transparency, make the file as transparency, shift click, and I take all the white and I shift click on the D inside, yeah, and I can shift over here the D inside as well and over here as well if you want to zoom in you always can go and zoom in and edit the file okay right over here you zoom in and go back shift click and preview 
And if I go back to my design, right there. So basically less than 20 seconds I design uh, with the white however I wish to. You know, it's up to you to use the transparency mask the way you want it, okay? And again, if you see, when you see a white right over here inside, okay, the background over here, you will not see that on the print, okay? It's just as a preview. Unless you want to go to a high quality preview, it will slow down your, your print, your, your computer. So basically you can go to edit preference and you can use preview as a very high or medium or high. It will print correctly, okay? Okay, so we we done to and uh, we done with the with the PNG uh, with the file. Let me see if I have another file that I take samples. Take all of them. This one. This one. We have one one more file. Oh, we did this one as well. Okay, so is another option on the Flexi is a cost estimate. Okay, so the cost estimate, so to example, if I want to see how much it costs uh, to print that unit, okay, um, is it? It's not estimate. We call it guesstimate. Basically, you can go to setup, and uh, let me see a second. That's good. Everything's good here. Perfect. So after I rip the file, okay, because we need to understand what resolution we're printing. If we're printing 360 by 1080 or 720 by 720, each resolution will also consume different ink, okay, that different volume of ink. So after uh, ripping, I have estimate. If I go to the config es estimate, to example, I'm going to use um, same ink cost for all the colors. So, to example, 1,000 milliliter, it cost 129.99. Okay, make it the default. So basically, if I click estimate, I can see exactly how many milliliter I'm going to consume and how much it costs. Only the ink is not include TPU and film on anything. But the best way to understand the real cost is basically go to the MSM, exit, go to print history, and basically you can see all the print history for the unit, okay? So you can go print in info. On the print info, you basically will call to the printer and pull all the data from the printer so you can see what I print, to example, today at 11.30. Uh, we print the color swap, and you can see uh, how many ink consume con, um, ink consume we uh, hold on, let me, uh, we use. You can see the total ink, the total media. Uh, you can see uh, the graph, okay, and how long it takes to print as well. The same file. If you want to change a setting, if our friend from Europe or from Japan want to change from yen or euro, or to do a different setting. You can always can go setting, uh, cost setting, and basically you can add ink type, the price for ink type. Uh, if you have clean solution, you can adjust the clean solution price or light sand, light magenta. You can change it. Uh, media, so you can add the media based on your cost on media. If you use 24 inch media or 13 inch media, you can change it. And the TPU. Uh, this is the price for TPU per kg. So this is, the TPU is a average about 10% off and on, you know, minus plus for the TPU. It's based on the print image, uh, the basically print image. Uh, the TPU will stick to the image. But that is the tools with, with the most accurate tools you will have with the, um, uh, with the, uh, with the print history, okay? So, I'm going to move it over here. OK. 
Okay. Okay, we're going to answer some question. Uh, thank you for the time, of course, and uh, let's answer some question. We'll take it from there. Uh, hold on. Uh, Greg has a question. Uh, if we can install four white in uh, to increase the speed, uh, the speed of the six to eight D. Basically, uh, we you you can do it. The it's not about the jetting. Is the is the way uh, the flexibility and the firmware of the printer will work. But uh, we do have an uh, update that's going to be in uh, probably around end of September, beginning of October. We can s remove the two cleaning cartridges and basically channel four, uh, sorry, channel five, six, seven, and eight will be an uh, option to have four wide. So you can print 360 by 1080 basically with more opacity. So thank you, Greg, for the question. Yes, we will send uh, to everybody uh, uh, the link for the webinar. Okay, I think I answer many of the questions, so I'm going to uh, uh, browse all the questions. So a couple of minutes, and I will see if I didn't touch anything on the question, so I can answer. So. Jeff asked a question, uh, my version 22 keep crashing on Windows 11. So if you have issue with the, uh, with the Windows, uh, with, the win with the Flexi 22 uh, version, go ahead and uh, update, do a software update for all the Windows and then install the Flexi 22. Um, is, a, is a C++ new version uh, was a, a update by Microsoft. So go ahead and do a, do a software update for Windows first for all update until you don't see any version and then install the new 377, the, the 3777 uh, version, the build, and then it will fix that, uh, that issue. Couple, uh, couple seconds, guys. I'm going to go over all the questions. So I want to, I really want to answer all the, all our uh, great customers. So give us a couple seconds.
Okay, so I didn't touch one thing about nesting, and uh, I have question, a question from Jeff. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for that. I uh, forget about the nesting. Yeah, we're going to do some nesting. So every, everybody see the screen so I can drag a couple files, however file we wish. Okay, so, and it can be any file, PDF, JPEG, any one of them. So basically you click Shift and Shift and click, and then you can do nest. Now, when you do a nesting, you can, in, in Flexi 2022, you can add, you can add to, the, to the nesting. Because before that, you know, if you have another file and you forget to, to nest it, it was always a challenge to unnest everything and nest it again. But right now, I can take, you can see right now, this is a one group, four job, one, two, three, four, and I forgot to nest that file. Okay, I forgot, you know, so I don't need to unnest, you know, click and unnest. I basically always can click on the file and drag it to the nest. And it's, oh, you sure you want to move the job to nest? Yes. And now I have five jobs in nesting. So when I open a, a file for nesting, you can see all the file now is, is big one, of course, because the size of the image. But I always can go back over here and change it uh, to example to... Uh, I will change each file, so I'm going to change it to 20% on this one. I can click on this one and change to 20%. And basically, this is my file. So I can click on this one. I can change to another 20% to example. So you can see all my file in one Windows. I can click on that. And we take, and again, the, the, the system will do automatically what is the best way to save on media. So you don't need to drag, you don't, don't try to drag and move this one to the top on this one. He will do it automatically. You can do, you want job first, second, you can, you can dra just drag it. He will do everything automatically, the best way to save on media, okay? Okay, so basically we have all the, ooh, that is a big one. 20,100%, so the printer, I think my computer will crash in a second. <laughs> that is a good challenge for uh, for AMD. I don't know why. <laughs> why did you choose here AMD? <laughs> All right, let's move it back to the normal. That is a big one. I've never seen it. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. Come on. Give it a couple seconds. It will come back. Here we go. All right. It didn't crash, but it's, uh, it works, actually. <laughs> all right. So basically, this is our file, the nesting file. We can see all the files. So let's assume I want to print um, my wild three times. Okay, so I can click three times over here, and I can, if I want to get this one five times, uh, five times, and if I want to change uh, the size, okay, the same thing. I can go over here, my customer call, and he want to get five inch by five inch, okay, right there. And again, I can mirror, I can flip, I can do however I wish, you know, on, on the nesting, and then you can send it, and it will be one job. And you can do it for anything, the wide density, any, any, uh, any of, uh, of the environment. You can take the nest and basically move it to the different environment. It will be uh, in one nest. That is the, the new feature. Before, we need to unnest everything and basically uh, nest again. OK, so we're back to our question. Um,
I have a uh, we have a question from Bra from uh, Brandon Johns, and I'm not sure exactly this the question, but I think he's uh, I'm thinking he's talking about the uh, hot folder. So we can discuss about hot folder right over here. So basically, if you go to to your environment, for example, if you print on better quality, uh, best quality, um, or any quality, you can basically right click and go to um, setup properties. And the setup properties, you can see the hot folder. You can change the hot folder, okay? And when you drag the file to the hot folder, it will print them automatically. And the way you print them automatically, you can uh, send by order by name or send order by uh, uh, by edit or over here is automatically nesting a job so if you have to example five job you know uh, you can print it automatically or you can wait every 30 minutes to get, collect all the file and then print it uh, you know that's you know but I, I highly recommend to not uh, not use Again, not use any uh, thumb drive or external hard drive because it doesn't work well on the nesting size. Okay, so use it on a local hard drive. Oh, you have another hard drive that is uh, basically only dedicated to uh, to uh, to the hard folder. Uh, we have some customer that's printing many job every day. I'm talking about probably about. Uh, 500 to a thousand uh, different logos a days or different file a days so uh, to deal with that high hard, uh, with that large volume you really need a, a good uh, hard drive and you know to have it at the uh, ssd and today ssd is a normal uh, hard drive so so i think i answered the the question on the hard folder okay we'll go to the next So we we have a, a, some a question with the David. He, he saw some Chinese characters, you know, all, all over the printer or when you open a file. That issue being fixed. It was the prototype of the uh, the Flexi uh, uh, 22, uh, Flexi DTF 22. When we start to release it with the transparency. But as you can see right now, we, we don't have that issue anymore. So basically, you can delete the Chinese folder and and install the new build. Okay, the new build will fix it and as well fix a, do update for all your uh, for all your uh, Windows update. That will be uh, already dressing and. Okay, uh, it's very important. Uh, we have some questions. Uh, you know, we always update the the Flexi DTF Pro Edition. We also doing a lot of update on the machine. So always, if you go to uh, hold on one second. Okay, so if you go to stsinks.com, hold on. We open the screen, a different browser. So if you go to stsinks.com, 
under a resource, uh, where is that? Hold on. Oh, here we go. Maintenance guide and, and resource. You will see a lot of document, uh, document or MSM, uh, MS, uh, MSM new version status monitor. You have a framework update. So right now the correct uh, framework update at this moment, if you go to the MSM, you can see uh, my printer is on 1.05. So make sure you update your framework and you can download from STS website the framework. Uh, to update the framework, it's very simple. You go to Framework Update, you open the file, double click on the file, and open, and basically will update the, the, the framework automatically. You no need to, do not turn off the printer. Please do not turn off the printer while is update. Just wait, it will take about five to 10 minutes. The machine, the, you will see a screen to restart the printer, and then you restart the printer. Do not restart the printer before that. Okay, and you're going to hear three beep, and that's when it's finished, but wait until you see the complete uh, finish, um, uh, the update. Okay, and again, we fixed the issue for, uh, for the, uh, the, the ink level, so before it was not accurate 100% on the ink level, and we correct it right now. So if everybody has the 1.05, that is the update for all the ink level uh, correction. I'm still reviewing all the question. We have a question that's if it's the version 22 is a free update. Yes, it's a free update. All our version is free update at this moment. So go ahead and update uh, your uh, RIP software. Um, okay. Okay, I think we answer all the questions. Thank you so much for uh, today meeting. I know everybody is busy. Um, thank you again, and uh, we will meet in uh, two weeks when we have a new update. We update all our uh, customers, and uh, we'll take it for there. And we're going to share the link as well. So feel free to contact us and at any time at support at stsinks.com. Thank you so much.